good morning to everyone. I want to say thanks so much for uh, for attending. We've got a, a great webinar today. We're going to be covering uh, a few tech insights, focus on why now is the right time to move from pro to plus. Uh, for the webinar, we've got our CEO and president, Tony Civitella. Thanks so much, Tony, for joining us. Looking forward to uh, talk about plus, which is a product we've talked about probably uh, five, six years. We released it four years ago, but we've talked about this product. I don't think 10 years yet, but we're getting there, of course, at this point. But uh, majority of our clients did move to plus, but there's a good chunk of our clients are, you know, they love pro and hey, we love pro also. We just want to see, hey, is this the right time for you, for the folks that stayed on, on pro? Maybe this is the time to move to plus. Uh, again, my name is Zach Moore and I'm our uh, solutions enablement and engineering manager. So excited to be on with Tony. Uh, Tony, I think that's a great breakdown of why we wanted to talk about this this topic now. Just seeing, you know, when's the right time to make that move? Because like you said, I think we've seen a, a good chunk of our, our base move from uh, Road Plus already. So we've got great content to cover, but you know, good opportunity here with with the CEO and myself on, if anyone has questions, uh, you know, about the, the Plus platform or making the move, you know, feel free to put it in the chat. We'll try to address as many questions as we can. And, uh, and if we don't get to your question on this webinar, obviously, feel free to, uh, to reach out. We'll try to follow up with you uh, afterwards. Everything we're covering today is, is all gonna be recorded, Tony. So if, uh, if you need to step away from your desk, if you miss anything, all of this is gonna be available on our YouTube channel uh, for TransFinder. Uh, shortly after the presentation. So no worries there. Let's get rocking. So we've got a pretty simple agenda today, right? Pretty uh, pretty straightforward. A few things we wanted to cover. So I wanted to talk about why we feel like now is the right time to upgrade. Uh, and this is not, you know, because, uh, because you know, you can't implement in fall if, if you don't do it today, things like that. We want to talk really larger industry things that are going on that we think makes plus the right decision today. We're gonna spend plenty of time talking about some of the key benefits, really things that we found our clients that have moved from the pro environment to the plus environment, what they've told us they love about it, things that they're using every day that they just couldn't do before. And then we'll wrap up by talking a little bit about how we make it easy for you to change, right? We'll talk about what the implementation looks like, the dedicated team you'll have, some of the resources, uh, and help you better understand in case you do have some of that anxiety still about, you know, uh, what what kind of challenge is that going to be for us to take on? So that's the, the content we have to cover. Really, the meat of it is we want to look at the benefits. We want to look at what Plus offers and some of the features that you'll be able to have uh, when you do decide to make that, that move. And Zach, I just want to remind everybody that still has Pro, and I think everybody that signed up, most likely you, st you only have Pro, uh, Pro. I'm sure you've seen Plus. We waited a long time to release Plus four years ago, because we want to make sure the functionality and, and all those features that you love in Pro, there's an Equal Room version in Plus. And that was really, that was based, like bare bone. And obviously we called it Plus because it's significantly more than what you had in Pro. Um, there's no way we're going to be able to cover all those additional features and benefits that Plus has compared to Pro, but that was really key. So anything you're saying, oh, am I gonna miss that feature? What about this? Everything you have in Pro uh, has been uh, recreated, really. We started from ground zero and uh, we didn't just you know, build on a platform we had before we really, and I think I made some uh, comments about the old, uh, the house makeover that had happened, you know, about a decade ago, remember that whole thing they would go into, they would take a house, knock it down, build it from scratch within a week. And then they had this huge bus. And at the end of the show, they always say, you know, move that bus. And then all of a sudden, here's a brand new house. That's what we did here. And plus, Zach, it definitely did not take a week to do that. It took us years, years, because we talked about Plus way before 2020 when we released it. We started talking about Plus around the time we, we released the final, which is about 2015. So we're getting about 10 years that we talked about Plus. So super excited. So I just want to, I know there's going to be some questions like, but this is a feature I love in Pro. There's going to be an equivalent one 
And plus, trust me, that's why we waited so long. I think we're going to have mostly pro users on, on this webinar, like you said, Tony, but if you have plus users too, you know, there's going to be features here. Look, honestly, somebody that bought plus in, in 2020, uh, the product today is so significantly different, you know, hopefully should see some value in, in some of the features, functionalities we're talking about. So big thing that we wanted to address is, is why is now the right time to make the change? Well, this is what we're hearing, not only from our clients, from, from, uh, prospects that are, are looking for technology, maybe coming from manual, and really just the industry at, at large is, there's so many challenges facing the transportation industry. The you know issue of driver shortages is something that's been impacting transportation district for years. And we have tons of great stories, uh, success stories of our clients that have been able to manage their driver shortage problems using the tools we're providing in PLOS. Uh, but it goes way beyond that too. There's uh, issues of electric buses, budget shortages, managing student ridership and students getting lost, uh, student behavior issues, vehicle safety issues. There's so many problems and challenges that we hear uh, when we're talking to people about finding the right solution for them. And we've got so many great success stories, so many stories of our clients that have told us, thanks to PLUS, I was able to manage my, my school open. I was able to have one of the, the smoothest opens that we've ever had with zero phone calls or, or issues. I was able to reduce runs because I was dealing with driver shortages. I was able to bring on new electric vehicles. I was able to do all of these new things. So we know that there's a lot of excuse me, challenges going on in the industry right now. And we're hearing from our, our clients that PLUS is the solution to a lot of these problems they're having. So while you're facing all these challenges, and I'm sure as you're seeing a couple of these boxes, you're saying, Yes, absolutely, that's something we're dealing with. You have to understand there's been a lot of changes in technology over the year, right? You may be using Pro and, and maybe it's working for what you're doing today and you're getting the job done, but you have to understand the features and functionalities that we brought with the new platform are light years ahead of, of what we offered in Pro, right? And that's why districts are able to use that new technology to tackle some of these new problems that they're seeing, right? And you know the whole thing about it is like it's just so much faster, and you can do a lot uh, more with it. Uh, and you know, going back to all those things you talked about, how you could do more, you could be more, you could do a lot more optimization. Well, we built when we built this house from scratch, we had that in mind. How do we uh, create a product that's still easy to use, but has all those powerful features that that some of you have been asking for? Like, why is it not in Pro? Well, just the foundation didn't have all that. But today, 2024, we look at all the different products installed. And by the way, we do look at RockBunner Pro and RockBunner Plus as two separate products. When you look at all the routing products in the mark, on the market right now, uh, and again, there's some Windows, there's some browser, and of course, Plus, Plus is all browser. Plus is the number one uh, used product out there. Uh, it really is, of all of those products out there. There's a lot of companies out there that do offer a browser and a desktop, just like we do. But Plus is the number one installed product in the United States at this point. So just want to know you're in good company when we're talking about Plus. That's right. And, and that school's big and small too, Tony, right? That's something that's key. A lot of schools say, oh, I don't know if this is the right solution for my school because, you know, what we handle, you know, we've got schools that are managing a handful of buses to a fleet of a thousand or, or more vehicles, right, running on PLUS. So it really is a solution built for every district. Before we jump into kind of highlighting some of the features that, that we think are gonna make people's lives so much better, you know, I really do have to give a call out. We did a webinar, Tony, you and I, back in December, uh, and we had a few panelists on, some of our clients, and I encourage anyone here that's looking at this thinking, you know, how challenging is this going to be? You know, how quickly could I get something like Plus set up? You know, go take a, a look at that uh, webinar we did that was specific for compact districts uh, and Claire at Scotia Glenville, which is one of our oldest clients that we've had there in upstate New York, talked about her experience. Just last year, she went through the uh, the implementation process of going from Pro to Plus, uh, and she talked about how she managed to do it. She started implementation in June, and she went live with it in August. And she had one of the smoothest school opens using that brand new platform. 
Now, I, I don't want to tell everyone that you're going to be able to get going that quickly because it really depends on your bandwidth and uh, how much you're able to dedicate to it. But it really speaks to how easy it is to make that switch, right? Plus is really built on a lot of the same foundations that Pro is. So while there's a lot of new tools, bells and whistles, intuitive uh, interfaces, a lot of the foundations are still there for somebody looking to make that move, right? But Zach, you know, Clara loved Pro. She loved it. She she was comfortable with it. She knew every way uh, to make Pro shine and sing, really. And when we start talking about Plus, she got excited about Plus, but also she got pressured in the school district. Let's be honest. She got pressured to say, hey, if you're going to make a, a change in product, and again, we don't see it as a change, but you know, some some of them, some of our clients thought, well, this is a change. If I'm going to pull the trigger on another product, which it's not, it's the same product, just looks different. Uh, I should look at what else is out there. And of course, I got to be honest with you, we all get nervous about that. You know, we always tell everybody, hey, go check out what else is out there. Because uh, we always know how sometimes the grass is not always greener, but it is always greener over the septic tank. That's something that someone told me uh, in New York State, a great person always said that. And so I, that's something I always use. But the she did go, she looked around, uh, what else is out there? And she said, I'm sticking with you guys. And so that was really a, Claire is not just, yeah, I didn't know any better. I went from Pro to Plus and I love it. No, she really was questioning, is this really the right move? Do I need to go from Pro to Plus? If I'm going to make a change, again, to her, she thought it was going to be a big change. And you could see she went live much faster than anyone else because she realized this is really the same product. It's logical to go from you know step A to step, you know B, C, and D, just like it was in Pro, but just much faster. So Clara really, I love her story because she really was not this massive advocate of sticking with us. She looked around, she looked at other products, did presentation, and of course, music to our competitors' ears. Like here's a one of our oldest clients looking to potentially leave us. And she didn't leave. She stayed with us and realized, I'm doubling down with Transfender. So I think this is where Clara is uh, is a rock star and really even Scotia Glenville, a rock star client, has been with us for 30 years or so. So this is where they didn't just automatically just press the button. They, they did their homework. Well, look, I bring up uh, that webinar that we did in December because it's easy for you and I, Tony, to talk about how Plus is going to be great, uh, it's going to be easy to use, but sometimes it's nice to uh, to hear a third-party uh, take on it. So, like I said, I, I encourage anyone to go take a look on our YouTube channel. You can see that webinar we did for Compact Districts back in December. Uh, I think really insightful conversation that we had there. But Let's let's jump into uh, talking about some of the, the features, Tony. Anything uh, anything to add before we, we jump in? No, but there's some questions. Uh, please uh, start typing things in, all right? If you have any questions, so let's go to the features. Come on, let's let's do it. This is this is just a laundry list, and what we really wanted to focus on is what have we heard? We've implemented so many of our our pro clients on Plus now. I think at this point what something like 75%, maybe 80% have made the move over. And we've heard a lot of feedback about uh, about what people love about it. The number one thing that we hear is definitely the level of customization that you can do uh, with Plus. And this is across the board. You know, a small example is, hey, I could have a student layout and I could customize it to look exactly the way I need it to look. Uh, this could be for a router, for a dispatcher, for a school administrator. These views can all be created the way you want. And not only that, it can be customized, something that we can work with you and do, but we give you the tools to customize it yourself. I took a screenshot of this example here. Tony, you may not realize this is a, a layout that was created by one of our clients uh, that mm. just used the building blocks and tools. He color coded right. things, he built the tabs. Uh, this isn't something we provided for him. They said, hey, this is how I want my student layout to look when I open it up. And I, I said, that's great. Let's let's uh, take that layout and you know be able to use that across the board. So it's things that you can share and uh, we can now use for any of our clients that are looking for something similar too. Doesn't just stop with a student layout. 
the customization goes very, very deep with, with Plus, right? You'll see it in the ability to change colors, icons, uh, what data you view, uh, labels, anything like that. And again, it can be set to your personal preference. So you may have different people doing different work within the district. And when they log into Plus, they have totally different experiences based on how they've customized or, or laid that out. And everyone's got different responsibility everywhere, right? Whether it's a school district or different organizations. So sometimes you don't need to see all that data. It, it is, you know, you, it is clutter. Um, and then you're fumbling through information. If, if I'm a dispatcher, then just give me enough information for me to do a great job as a dispatcher. And if I'm a router, you, I want to see more information. So this is where it, it can be uh, created in a way that different people with different roles, they, they their interface changes. Why not? Again, this is, you don't have to do that. You could just keep as is, you know, our default layout and you're good with it. But some of you, I know you, I know some of you very well. You want to go beyond just the, the base or the bare bone. You want to push the envelope and this is where you could do a lot with this product. So Tony, beyond uh, customization, I really wanted to make sure I talked about map editing on this webinar, and that may not seem super intuitive. We may have pro users saying, I can edit my maps. I edit my maps all the time. I'm adding new streets and pieces like that. But this is a piece that I know as, as we're doing implementations was one of the biggest pieces of feedback we got from users coming from Proto Plus. Map editing was not a super intuitive process. We gave you a lot of power, a lot of capabilities, but it's very challenging. I heard so often from people saying, I didn't line my nodes up right. I didn't get it quite connected. I built a whole new neighborhood and it's not working. I can't, I can't get it routed. Uh, some of those tools were, you know, very challenging to use was the reality of it, right? And what we've seen is moving from pro to plus, we've made the tools so much easier for our clients. They can add a new street, they can connect their grids, uh, and it takes a couple of clicks. They're finding that this process is has been totally overhauled for them based on the feedback we've heard, right? But Zach, I just wanna remind a lot of you that, you know, have seen other products out there. You know, a lot of companies have decided to remove map editing. They, they realize, you know, how often do you have to change a map? And like I tell you, we've definitely considered, uh, do we need to add map editing? You know, maybe we could do without map editing. Maybe we could do without adding a new street. And uh, it definitely crossed our mind before we released Plus, let me tell you. But when you look back and you realize adding those little driveways, anything specific, and now we've added what day, what time of day you could take that left-hand turn, maybe slow down certain roads because there's a traffic scenarios. You will see we, we didn't just, let's just mimic what we did in, in Pro because we should just at least, let's check the box by saying we have map editing. No, we went beyond that. You could do a lot with streets. You could really change the way your route. There's a lot there. And some other companies decided, why even add that? You know, maybe you could just give them a Google map and Google map is good enough. Well, it's good enough for me to go on vacation a few hours away from my house. It's good enough, but it's not good enough for uh, what, what you do on a daily basis. If you can't make changes or some other companies are saying, hey, if there's a street missing, you call me, we'll get it added. Oh, good luck. When, last time you called Google, did anybody ever call Google and said, hey, you know, your search engine is wrong. We need to, can you make that change? And again, I'm being sarcastic, but we definitely thought about removing street editing. Why have it? It's cumbersome. And why do you need it? Well, we know why you need it. And some of you that are in pro realize, I don't want to lose all those segments I added. I don't want to, all those loops and, and so forth. That goes beyond. Some questions are coming here, are coming through. Uh, how current are the satellite imagery? I think they're okay. We really can't control those. Of all the things we could, you know, could control, obviously the street, but the, the satellites are, you know, we're using Esri as our, our base and they're okay. You know, they're not live. They're definitely not live. They're always behind sometime a year or two, right, Zach? I mean, have you seen anything? 
they, you know, Esri, you know, publishes, they do rolling updates, you know, across the globe, things like that. You know, two years would, would be a, a pretty extreme example, but you're right. They're not live, but, you know, hopefully it's current enough for uh, a new neighborhood that's got houses built and people moved in usually is, uh, is the uh, idea. It really isn't. Uh, once they are there, they definitely overlay very well, because yep. we know from GPS purposes, they're good. I mean, they, they're shape-wise are good, but sometimes they're different. And also depends, you know, where the pictures, uh, satellite images taken in the fall where there's less leaves, you know, there's just so many variables. You can't control that. But Zach, we can sort of start flying some satellites around and get some good every, you know, I, I guess it's going to take six months. I mean, I'm just thinking how long would it take just to get, us a new one, but then after we're after our last flight, we had to go back and do it again because now it's already six months old. Right? So they're just spinning around capturing photos. <laughs> so that's all they I mean, do. Okay, I mean they're okay. Clearly, you're not routing using satellite. That's a fact. Well, let's talk about some of the other new features we've added, unique to map editing and plus that pro users just didn't have access to. One of the biggest ones for us, obviously, Tony, is this idea of travel scenarios. Travel scenarios is a really powerful tool in that, you know, our clients forever have been editing their map. Hey, this is a, a street that may exist, but I know my bus can't get down it. They mark that street as, as non-traversable. What happens when maybe there's a street that you can't get down in the morning because of traffic, but in the afternoon, it's totally fine. Or there's a, a road that you would never take with a yellow bus, but maybe you have some white pleater or special needs vans that can get down it perfectly fine. That's what Travel Scenarios allows you to do, is it allows you to edit your map. You can prohibit streets, regions, turns to prevent those left-hand turns, but on a specific scenario basis, right? So they impact some trips, but other trips should not be affected by them. Again, and this can be by AM versus PM. It can be the type of vehicle that's driving the trip. You may have special uh, travel scenarios just specific for weather conditions, like snow or flooding seasons, uh, or even we see a lot of them being used for construction, right? Temporary construction, hey, the this area or this part of town is gonna be blocked off. Let me apply that travel scenario and then change it once the construction's over so I can get my trips rerouted. Just got a question asked about um, the uh, you know, new streets, of course, in traffic. So all that, we can, uh, clearly we can add traffic. Uh, you could see traffic in there. You could see that, but again, some of you realize you know, your your maps are old. I think there are some people saying that if you with Pro, you have some old maps. Remember, whatever streets you have in Pro, they'll get, I'm just going to move to Plus. But there is an opportunity to look at. All right, maybe is it worth getting a brand new street file? You know, you gotta weigh it, right? How much have you done? Is the new street file has all that work you've done, or only 75% of what you've done? You got to weigh and a lot of times you work with your account executive and make that decision i do believe it it is worth every several years to look at what can i do is there a better map and then you can always customize it but remember you could keep your changes you could tag those to freeze so ways you could keep those and we're, we give you a new street file there's a lot of options just talk to your account executive and hopefully you know who that person is yeah, good questions here about travel scenarios too. Do you, do you always need to apply a travel scenario? We set everybody up with a default scenario. That's what it'll revert to. You know, one thing I've heard, because I've seen the implementation side of this, Tony, is setting up all this travel scenario, it sounds like a lot of extra steps. Uh, there's no reason that you have to set up travel scenarios. You're ready to go and start routing day one with our default scenario we provide. But I've also seen it on the tail end where somebody skipped doing travel scenarios and they go, well, now I've got 50 trips. I got to go and, and reroute because it keeps making this left-hand turn I don't want it to make. Well, we could have prevented that just with doing a little bit of work up front and setting some travel scenarios just for those afternoon trips to say, hey, don't take that left-hand turn. So we can do it either way. It's not something that you need to do for every trip. You can always just use a, a default scenario that we provide for you. Definitely the default is the way I would go initially, not worry about it. And as you're learning a product and then you start flexing your muscles, this is where you start using these things. I think they're going to save you a significant amount of time 
and especially you have multiple people routing and maybe you have some junior people are routing they're not you know they don't know the area very well this is where it becomes really handy I know we're spending a lot of time on Maps, Tony, but Map Viewer was a brand new tool we rolled out this past year, and it's a really exciting one. Map Viewer is a great way to help visualize any of the data that you want to on your maps. You can do it while you're routing. And so what that means is I can bring in any of the data that I have within Plus. So I can pull in students to visualize on my map, school locations, school boundaries, even geo alert zones, right? So if I keep high traffic area or criminal offenders. I may just wanna see that while I'm, I'm doing some of my routing work. But what you can also do is you can pull data from outside of PLUS into your map viewer as well. There's a lot of great county data that's being created. I've worked with a lot of counties that have map layers for where their bike zones are or walking paths or sidewalks. And I could simply pull that data in using map viewer and now I can visualize that information while I'm routing or creating boundaries or anything like that. So Map Viewer is a really, really powerful tool. Again, the idea is I can now visualize anything with my map if I have that data within Plus, or even if I have map files outside of Plus. That's all because we, we run uh, our system on that Esri platform, which is so flexible and easy to use. But we also felt it was important to overlay anything you want. So we've added a brand new palette and you'll see with how we're using uh, map canvas. We use these terms about being an artist. And some of you have been at conferences, especially at our annual client summit. I've talked about how you guys are all artists. And so we took that approach to be more of an artist using palettes and, and canvases and uh, tools. Really fun. Uh, we're, just, we're having fun with it. But the power is just there. And there's just we're constantly adding new features here. I love what we did in that viewer with this release that came out in, uh, <coughs> I think it came out in January or, or end of uh, December. Some great features and stay tuned. There's even more things we're adding to this uh, palette. That's right. And last one I promise on maps here, but uh, a big one is a map comparison tool. Tony, this is one that again, maybe you have plus users that, that aren't even aware of this tool. It's uh, it's really something we've rolled out recently and speaks to how plus is constantly innovating. I have a quick video here that kind of explains how the map comparison works. And so as a router here, I may be taking a, a set of routes and saying, hey, is there any optimization I can run on these routes? Can I make them run a little bit more efficiently? And that's something that uh, here the group that has pro really can do this. That's can right. Say, make these five trips better you can do it and so now with this functionality literally lets you it's almost like an overlay can i That's compare it. and you're just sliding back and forth what does it look like when i optimize and then you could just see it not only do you see i mean people love reports and see data but why not just literally move the current over like you know a before and after what does it look like it's that simple beautiful right. So on the left, you've got the before, on the right, you have the after, just like you said, Tony, right? And you can see this slider right here in the middle slides back and forth. Here's the change, there's the original, right? Really great visualization tool, for sure. A lot of cool things, a lot of cool things. Well, you're right, we're, we're skipping ahead a little with this video, talking about some of the optimization tools. Let's make sure we talk about that here. Uh, from mapping, I wanna jump into some of the the routing features that we have as well. Anything that we should wrap up before we uh, we jump into routing here? No, routing is where we spend significant amount of time to, when we rebuilt this house, we want to make sure that routing was going to still be our strength and uh, our boundaries where we place the stops and the stop boundaries. We want to make sure that we're very unique and still continue that method of routing, but also if you could press the button and give me a starting point, please do that. And this is where I think we did a great job with this. And uh, don't, don't take it from us because we're gonna only say great things about our product. Talk to our other clients that made them switch, whether it was Claire that did it less than, you know, about a year ago or, or some that just did it six months ago. Yeah, if you look, if you talk to those that made the switch when we first came out, they went through a whole transition how we've added significant amount of functionality from 
that first uh, plus version to today, those don't, you know, they were, we call them the early adopters. They're the ones who were really giving us significant amount of feedback. Some even, you know, found issues with those things. And we're grateful for those clients that took, took the product the early days and thank you for those. I don't think any of them are on this call, but the advantage of them doing all that work, you don't have to do that. It's already been done. We vetted out any, know, maybe some bad bugs. We fixed those, but now we're talking about adding just amazing functionality. So there's no reason for you to wait any longer, right? I think it's very fair to say nobody uh, nobody on this webinar here would be a, an early adopter of the product, right? Plus is a, a thoroughly vetted uh, solution at this point. Um, Tony, talking about routing, you know, I really think about all of those pro users that had to learn so much. And, you know, I, I just think about somebody trying to come on brand new at a school district and having pro pulled up in front of them with all those buttons and icons. I think about how we would train on it with a little trifle where people could roll it over to learn all the buttons and icons and routing. Obviously, there's not a lot of an intuitiveness to a product like that. It really required somebody to dig in, roll up their sleeves and learn it. You'll see here with Plus, we've tried to make it just as powerful, right? We don't wanna lose any functionality, but it's gotta be more intuitive. You've gotta have a way that somebody could start new at your district and, and learn how to be routing within a few weeks, not a few months. So uh, a few videos that we have here, this is a great one. It shows how, hey, I have a, a lot of students on the map here. I've got a lot of blue dots and all of our TransFinder users all know what blue dots mean. There's like kids that need to get routed, but see how easily within Pro, <laughs> within Plus, I can now start routing my kids. Okay, I can create a, a shape here and say, hey, let me lasso these students up. The system's selected them all. And with a single click of a button, I could say, hey, go ahead and, and give me door-to-door -door stops for all 30 of these students here. The system does a lot of the work for you. You can see it creates the stops, it sequences them, but I can take this even further and say, wait a minute, these are for special needs vehicles. I can't put 30 kids on a bus. Let me even go ahead and break this trip out so it can tell me how many vehicles do I need to transport all 30 of these students. You can see how quick and fast that is and something that you can easily imagine bringing a new staff member on to learn that process there, right? It is not memorizing a bunch of buttons or icons. And Zach, that was really a feedback from our pro clients. Hey, um, I've personally been in this industry, you know, this was like my college project. I think many of you know my story. So I grew up in this industry, you know, I was 20, 20 years old, uh, 34 years ago when I started working with many of you. And I learned uh, from most of you, I know what's the uh, the business. But back then, the I'm gonna say that it was more stable, meaning there was not a lot of people moving around. Yeah, there was a, uh, maybe fewer people were retiring. How can I say, you know, they were, they were working, you know, maybe later in, in, in their career, they enjoyed it. For many reasons, people are you know retiring now. Maybe they're just tired of it. And there's a lot of new people coming to the space. And so one thing we had to make sure is that it's got to be not just easy to use when you're from Go to Pro to Plus, but if as you bring more staff on board, you can't just. I mean, we love to you know train you guys and all that, but it should be able to be in a way that you could just self-pace. We've created our university classes. Uh, uh, certification classes and you now it's bragging rights because we want people to use our product and it's got to be easy to use you should have to get a master's uh i mean i think we uh, it's a credit uh, university classes right zach that's right yeah <laughs> get your uh, your degree in transfinder I university if you, i think if you were certified on so many different products we used to give out t-shirts i'm not even sure we do that anymore, but yeah, there's a lot of certification, which is really a bragging right. Tony, there's a good question in, in the chat, and I know there's some specifics we may have to dig in with the with that specific user, but it, you know, it is worth touching on that import-export process with, with Plus. Maybe a little bit of an oversight that I didn't have a, a ton of content here to cover, because I know how important that is for our pro users, whether they're importing their data today from the SIS, 
or whether they're, they're having struggles or challenges to import it. We've definitely built a lot of great tools within PLUS to make sure that we're able to import your data from your student information system. Right, yeah, so we can I see, still I see set up that. the automation. I see there's, uh, Jason has is, is asked multiple questions here around import, uh, and it's a product, uh, is, is calling a synergy, and uh, I'm not aware of any issues with any student sys, because it's just data. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if that system could generate a file, we could import that in nightly or whatever that works. So I don't see any issues. Even uh, it looks like they didn't really work even in Pro. So then unfortunately they had a manual put in uh, students' data. That's hugely uh, challenging for you to manually really manage your data. Manually, I hope that we could make it better for you to go to Plus. Uh, you can still add things manually, but we don't want to do that. There's a lot of options. But Jason, let's let's bring this uh, conversation back with uh, the account executive and I'll make sure we follow up with you because data is data and we feel like we've had so much experience with so many other products out there, whether it's something that's like the normal infinite campus or power schools, one of the most of you use, there's a lot of products out there and it's going to be continuing more products. I feel confident that there's not a product out there that we no, have Synergy is a, a popular one. We definitely have clients on Plus that are, are importing their data from Synergy. So I think we'd have to Good. look at that I'm one glad. specifically. But Good. I'm, I'm glad you know about it. I, I don't personally know all the products out there, but I, Jason, I feel very confident. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure we could even find some people for you to, to talk with that, that Absolutely. import from Synergy. Um, you know, it, worth talking though, we, we have improved that process of the importing data for sure, Tony, too. So we have a lot more data checks that we allow to make sure that you know a bad data file doesn't doesn't throw off your uh, your database and your routing uh we've added a lot more customization right talking about user defined fields i can now import anything i want from a student information system if you're keeping check of homeroom teachers in there if you're keeping check of 50 different contacts for parents and grandparents we can now start to import all of that stuff into plus things that we had real limitations on being able to do in Pro, for sure. Tony, we'll keep things moving. You know, uh, routing is really key. One thing that I wanted to make sure to touch on is something that can be so simple, but this idea of moving stops between trips. This takes up a lot of our routers' days, I know. They're taking uh, their routes, they're splitting it up, and they're very manually trying to say, where can I move this, where can I drag that? The tools we've built in to make that kind of work uh, easier have been a huge benefit for our clients moving Pro to Plus. Here's a video I just wanted to share that talked about uh, taking a specific stop. I could zoom in and see stop number 12. So I don't think that should be on the, the purple route. I think we could be a little bit more efficient moving that over to my blue route. You know, I get calls anyway from mom saying, hey, the, uh, the bus drives by my house every day. Why can't I just get on that one? And I wanted to highlight here how easily I could just come over to my palette. Oh, let me back up a little bit more. I can come over to my palette, click on the stop, and simply click and drag it to move it from one trip to another. It's small, but this has really made so many routers' lives so much better, this idea that I could simply click and drag a stop to move it from one route to another route. So much really easier. Than I got to tell you, good question. Data from Proto Plus, does it include routes? It includes everything. Everything. Everything is going to be during our, it's just really a migration. It's where we're going to take all your data and convert everything from, I mean, am I saying this right? I mean, Zach, is there anything that, uh, to your knowledge, that we're not converting? From Pro to Plus, I mean, we're converting. Oh, really big stuff is, is those maps, right? You've done a lot of yeah. work building in your bus loops and building in new neighborhoods. We bring the map over. We bring your route stop over. boundaries. I mean, think about stop the stop boundaries. boundaries. Work is involved in the paths and and where to stop location. Those are nothing. All that's going to just come right through. you yeah. you'll see, and that's really where the learning curve. People are thinking, oh man, I got to learn a new product. You just no the stops. All right, we don't use crosses anymore. By the way, it's a great story why it started as a cross because the first product I worked on uh, was in college. It was actually a 
home health uh, product, which is actually more medical. So that's what the cross started with. Zach, I don't know if you did you know the story? That's why they I were didn't know that. the cross. No, I had no idea. Because it was, it was called, you know, it was more for home health, which still something that needs to get solved. Uh, so we just kept that with the crosses, but I didn't want to change it. It was almost like I don't want to jinx ourselves to change something, you know, something significant of a stop icon. But we went to plus we've had a lot of conversation and it's just better. Look, it has the sequence number right inside the circle, which is even better. So again, don't get intimidated. It really you don't don't get intimidated. So and yes, keep it scheduled. By the way, we have now fully uh, calendar based scheduling. So you're talking about split households. Again, this is what maybe this is the problem with some of the data coming in from your student information system. Okay. It it's just all calendar based. You can just say just on Tuesday or afternoon, it very we've expanded that functionality that Pro was good, just didn't have it all. That's right. Now those daily calendar breakdowns, that's been a, a big part. You know, there's a lot of things that that Pro users are are used to the workarounds. They're used to finding solutions within the limitations of the platform. Now in plus, it's just features that are built in. It's just native. Things like midday runs, shuttles, uh, daily calendar big routing. One. Big yeah. one. That's by the way, midday is just want to remind everybody what this means. Means you're picking up and dropping off students at the same time. And that's a big one. That's a huge one. We really didn't do a good job with Pro. And that's something that we want to make sure. Uh, you know, some of you waited so long to go to from Pro to Plus. We didn't want to create Plus just to be bare minimum, just to check that box. No, it's significantly better. And those are one of those painful things, midday routes that you pick kids up. Uh, you know, uh, mainly it's mid uh, morning and afternoon kindergartens. What happens is that you you pick up kids that were there in the morning. You pick them up at the school. But as you drop in some of these kids at home, you're picking up the PM kindergartens. There's a lot of schools out there still have AM and PM kindergarten. So midday, it's a little bit hectic, right? You're picking up kids while you're dropping off others. And man, we didn't do a good job. There's a lot of you uh, actually taught us new tricks that you can use pro, but it wasn't perfect. And so this now is perfect because we know where you're going eventually. You want to use a student card. You can't just play games or, or fit, you know, a, a square peg in a round hole. It looks fine if it's on a piece of paper and you could just type some notes and stop and comments. Okay, but it will not work when parents have have a, a phone and they're they they have their phone here and they're and they're seeing as the bus comes by how far away the, for you to you know, the drop off my son. Well, you can't do the the notes anymore when it comes to that. So we know where you guys are going eventually with this. That's right. Uh, another feature I, I always like to share with moving stops trip to trip is just this ability to share multiple stops. This is one that I don't hear a lot of people talking about, but a lot of the time it's not one by one. Sometimes I need to move multiple stops. What I love about our tool is how it allows you to automate a lot of that work, right? So if I select multiple stops here, I could say, yeah, let's put these stops all on my green run. But you see some of these tools here as well, the ability to let me just sequence those two stops I'm adding in, or maybe I need to change the entire sequence of my trip now that I've added these two stops. You can tell the system to automate a lot of that work. It makes your job so much faster. I never want to pretend like, look, the system's going to do it all for you, that you're just going to click a bunch of kids and say, hey, go ahead and route it. I'm done. I can log off for the, the rest of the summer. Of course, you always need that that personal localized element, but these tools do make people's work much faster to be able to say, hey, let me select these stops, do the sequencing for me, and let the, the system automate a lot of that work for you too. There's a good question about stops because they've seen that you had those stop boundaries. Some of them were gaps, right? Those are not the most perfect trips that I would generate. You typically in pro, you don't keep those gaps. You keep everything really tight. So that way, when you do optimize, you're keeping the stops together and it's just shuffling the stops. You know, maybe you have 10 trips with those stops. 
you could maybe go to from 10 trips down to nine trips, but the, the shape of the stop is still exactly. So yeah, we recommend you don't keep those gaps. So Zach, we were getting a little bit of criticisms like, you know, I see some, some of those gaps, what happens? Yeah. <laughs> uh, will the optimization fill the gaps? You can, you, there's an option called trial stop, but we think that's something that's sacred part that you know the safe area. You should be drawing those stop boundaries. This is what makes us very different, you know? It makes us very different from- uh, Tony, I've demoed this product a lot of times. I've never been accused of being I've a router. I've never, <laughs> so, yep. So, you know, so I, I definitely get criticized on some of my stops, some of my stop locations, my boundaries for sure. So. I know our, you know, the people on, on the calls here have been using Pro. I know they're well, experts. No, listen, Zach, the people that are still in Pro, they're very nervous. They've put sweat and time and all that. And they're like, man, I don't want to lose anything. So I could, I mean, this is a kind of group that still is, is hanging on to Pro because they're worried about that, which is a great worry. That's not, you need to worry about that. There'll be other things you probably should worry about, a new product, uh, more things, uh, more clicking around, uh, new features, but don't worry about things that you have and you're not gonna see it in, in plus. That's not gonna happen. I know we've got, I, I'm looking at my feature list here, Tony, and I'm looking at our time. We've got so much to cover, but I think it oh, just speaks to how much we, we wanna talk to, uh, talk to our clients one-on-one -on -one to really show them the things that are important to them. I, I would be remiss if I left this webinar and I didn't talk about one of the features people have been most excited about, which is geolinking their trips. I know everybody here has dealt with the struggle of, you know, their AM trips and their PM trips are mirrored. They're, they really run the same in the morning and afternoon for the most part. But if they make a change to one, their work is always double. They always get to go change the AM, go change the PM, change the AM back and forth. And so with this geolinking feature we've added, this is one that can easily cut your work in half. What it does is it links your AM trips and your PM trips so that as you make a change to one, it can automatically make the change to the other. I think a video we have here kind of highlights it really well. What you'll see is on the right-hand side, I'm gonna open my PM trip so I can see that on the map. And on the left-hand side, I'm gonna open my AM trip so I can see that, that on the map. And we'll show you how Plus is just smart enough to say, hey, as I make a change to one, go ahead and make that change to the other one. Zach, the right there alone, and open up an AM on one map and a PM on another map, that right there, that's not even a possible in Pro. That right there, <laughs> you, you're probably gonna blow people's mind just right there, just by- just take, it, take it for granted, yeah. you're right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so you so notice here, that a stop was created, yeah? Yeah, that's it. So as I, I right click, I create a door to door stop right there in the map, which you can see how easy that is to do. This system that says, hey, do you want to go ahead and link to this to your PM trip as well? And you can see automatically goes ahead and creates Definitely. that stop. And Second, by the way, stop boundaries just, too. I mean, a lot of time it's not just adding a stop. It's also maybe like, oh man, the afternoon boundary is a little bit different in my morning. But it's, so if you change the morning one, the afternoon also gets changed. There's so much features. So many features. Here's a more extreme version of that. You're right, Tony, right? Here's me making a, a big, crazy boundary. Again, this is where they'll tell me I, I would never make a, a stop boundary like that. You're going to get criticized. I'll, I, that's all right. I'll take it. But here's that linking, and you can see right on the PM, like magic, it, it pops right up for you. That's it. And, of course, you could change your color. You don't have to keep them both red. That way you could just see it. But this is good stuff. You know, every once in a while we do pop up Pro and look at it, uh, some functionality, especially because you know what we did is the map viewer. We're trying to really mimic what you're doing in cosmetics. So Clinton and I just a uh, few weeks ago, because we're adding a whole new thing called whiteboard, and uh, stay tuned for that. Holy cow! Uh, it's live sharing information live. So we looked at cosmetic, and boy. I think I can still use Pro though, I'll tell you, Zach. I think I can still do it. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. I had to, if someone like forced me to build the trip, I think I could do it. I didn't I, completely I, forget doing it. I just want to tell you. I think I I've lost it myself. I, I don't think I can <laughs> I don't think I could work in Pro anymore. I could do it. Could <laughs> I do it much faster and plus? Yes, I can. Oops. 
Uh, I want to make sure we show some of the optimization tools, right? This is really when I think about some of the tools that, that our clients are looking for to kind of reduce their driver shortage or reduce inefficiencies. These tools have played a major role, right? And mm -hmm. this is stuff that you really could not do in pro. You can see here, I've got about five trips open here. This is my middle school tier. And you can see it's not an all or nothing situation. I might say, hey, just on the west side, take those three runs that I have. And is there any way to run them a little bit more efficiently, right? And I can run that optimization. And what's great about Plus is these kind of impact charts we get, the optimization summary to say, yeah, we could run some optimizations. Here's how we would load balance your trips. Here's how we would move stops around. And this is how much time and distance you can save. You can see pretty significant savings that we can get just by running the optimization right in the tool. I've seen so many clients make that move from Pro to Plus. And that's day one, that's what they're doing. They're saying, hey, let me run some of these optimizations. How efficient have I been running my trips? Because I have no idea right now. You know, Zach, we're working on so many different products uh, right now. And we are with Wayfinder, with the, the driver uh, navigation system attendance, uh, adding more features to, uh, to our parent app. Just we're adding so many features. And so, you know, every once in a while I, I, I get, you know, I get to see these type of webinars about Plus, and I still get super excited about how much we've added to Plus compared to Pro. And I think I I, I know why our Pro clients have been a little bit reluctant. It's like, man, it's overwhelming. It's too much. We're just showing you things you can do. You don't have to do all these things. Remember that. So you can just out of the gate, just do things you're doing right now on Pro, and then go to your pace to start doing more of these things. Because believe me, you will. You will want to do these things. Tony, we'll we'll rapid fire a couple here just to uh, to make sure we we touch on them, just so that they leave here saying that's the question I need to follow up with my account executive. But Forum Finder is one that we definitely have to talk about, right? Because this is an included part of Plus. There's no additional cost for for using our forms, but it's a way to totally digitize your operation, right? Our clients that are doing anything on paperwork, capturing things like maybe a student conduct form, maybe a, a pre-post trip inspection form, or maybe you're having your community fill out forms like bus requests. Those are forms that with Plus, you can fully digitize it, right? You can create a digital form, you can share it with your drivers, you can share it with your community, you can print out a QR code so they can pull out their phone and, and scan and get right to that form. And it's so powerful because Unlike something like a Google form that just dumps into a spreadsheet for you, this ties right back into your routing platform. So for example, I could run a report to see those defects that get reported or pull up a vehicle history to see, you know, show me all the inspections that have been completed. I've seen such amazing things because this is so customizable. Our clients have made some really, really unique forms just based on what their district needs, you know? Tony, I know, I know you love forms. I know you have a lot to, to say. Anything uh, to add on forms before we kind of well, jump into the last few? Again, we're, we're constantly adding features. Uh, we're, uh, of course, a product that went through a significant uh, upgrade. It was Service Finder from uh, many of you do have Service Finder. And a year ago, we released the, the, the latest version. And so forms is all about defects and so forth. So many of you are going to start seeing some cool features in there that Forms not only do you add, you know, you collect data, but now we've added these rules and and a full workflow that it could create records, it could send emails, it could do so much and just fill out a form. Oh man, we are adding a lot of great features to our products. Just gotta keep up with us. Step one, Zach, these folks have to move to plus. It's time. You did a good job. You kept pro going. Listen, we're all proud of you guys. It's time to get going here. That's a good one. Good question here about uh, a plug for ACS. We'll, we'll definitely have plenty of uh, uh, plus at, at ACS. Before we, we kind of wrap up, of course, I want to make sure to mention it's so easy to get data out of uh, plus as well. We have not only a full report library, which I think all of our pro clients would expect, but we've really added a custom report writer, which means that now each district can really manage and customize, even build their own reports. 
uh, right there during implementation based on what they need and use. We've seen a ton of great reports that come out of it uh, for special needs, for uh, on-time arrival. But beyond that, we also have these customizable dashboards, which are really great too, right? This is something you can share district-wide with your viewfinder users. And so many use cases, again, I see live attendance dashboards, I see my late vehicle dashboards, I see my year-over-year -year metric dashboards. These can really be built out based on what you need at your district. And like I said, you can imagine those, those live views that maybe a school or, or school administrator can kind of keep track of right through viewfinder to be able to keep track of key information. And Zach, one of our, I mean, we have a lot of secret sauces, of course, at, uh, using our products, but one of them is still having different data sources. We loved how that worked in Pro. We we continued that, right? So you could have multiple data sources. What's cool about dashboards, you could have dashboards compare across data sources right on one screen. So you could be on one screen and really the, the dashboards or even reports, you go across data sources, which is really powerful because you could just see what how what's the trend what have i done in the past couple of years and not just you know right now you you run a report in pro by the way in pro you have to call us and we will build the reports for you which is still great and plus you could do that all yourself most of our clients still say hey i'm not building any reports you do it for me so we still do it but we show you how to build you know maybe make some changes and find changes whatever or add some additional fields but you should never just say Let's start with a brand new report with nothing on a piece of paper. You're not gonna do that, you just call us. And so many of these uh, report libraries that are now included in our system. So I think, isn't there like a certification on reports, is that right, Zach? We do, the Plus Report Writer has its own certification so. or, or its yeah. own course, that's right. Thought well so. look, Tony, yeah. we, we're not keeping anyone past 12, we're not cutting into anyone's lunch here today, but. You know, we've talked so much about Plus, it's really key to remember Plus is really just a part of the larger platform, right? A lot of the reason people have wanted to move to Plus is because they're looking for adding that technology for their parent app with Stop Finder, bringing in navigation for drivers or student ridership tracking. All of that comes part of the, the platform and Plus is obviously at the, the center of all of those tools, right? Tony, the last thing we got to leave people with here at 11.59 is just that we try to make that implementation easy for you, right? Anyone that's looking to make the move to Pro to Plus, we're there to hold your hand during that, that process, right? And that's why Claire told us, I was able to make the move in two months. You have your own dedicated project manager, your own one-on-one -on -one trainer. Look, there's a lot of clients that told me I learned Pro on my own, I had to figure it out. You know, we don't want to do that with Plus. We want to make sure that when you get into Plus, that you're utilizing all these tools. You're knowing how to manage it. You're knowing how to convert your data and get everything that you had in Pro and then use even more than that. Right? And Zach, as a business, we can risk our clients that have been with us for so many years go from Pro to Plus and have a horrible experience. We can't afford that. That would be horrible for our brand. So we or we have put a lot of dedicated resources to make sure your transition is super successful because we cannot afford that our you know clients have been with us for many years and uh you know these clients that are on here are at least four or five years old with us because they still have pro we are we have not sold pro since we released uh plus in 2020 so it's been so anyone who's is on this on this call here zach that our system at least four or five years, which are you are very loyal clients. We want to make sure you have an amazing experience to go from Pro to Plus because that's our reputation. So we put a lot of effort, to make sure you're gonna have a successful implementation. I think that's that's us scratching the surface on Pro to Plus. You know, last notes, Tony, I'll say Definitely. is obviously end of April, we do have our ACS, which is gonna be a great opportunity for our clients to see some of the new technology, whether it's Plus, Wayfinder, Softfinder, lots of good stuff there. But really, if you wanna know more, if you're interested in anything we talked about, we didn't get to your question, reach out to your account executive, right? We wanna hear from you. We wanna dig a little bit deeper onto your specific use cases, right? Definitely.
Good. Tony, well, thank you, everybody. I want to thank you so much for joining. Thanks, everybody, for, for joining the webinar today. Definitely. And uh, today is first day of, of spring, so enjoy spring. Uh, right? We're going to start seeing, uh, I know some of our southern friends, they already have uh, flowers. Some some friends of mine are already you know, potting their uh, flower pots. Well, we're not doing that yet because we're still we might have a chance of snow here this weekend. Uh, for Palm Sunday, so it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be cold here. So, but enjoy the spring; it's here. And uh, thank you for being very loyal to us, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.